Welcome back to Cloud Storage Bytes. So far, we've talked a lot about how to use Google Cloud Storage from managing data to optimizing performance. But there's one important topic that we haven't discussed yet, the price tag. Have you ever gone grocery shopping while you're hungry and you ended up blowing your budget right out of the water? I find that a list can be really helpful for me here so that I don't overestimate my snack requirements. This kind of planning can be helpful with cloud storage too. Just like when grocery shopping, it's a good idea to predict and track your data usage so you can anticipate your monthly costs. Since cloud storage billing is a little bit more complicated than grocery shopping, we'll need to take a closer look. Pricing is a compilation of several different components, data storage, networking, operations, and retrieval and early deletion fees. Each of these components has its own pricing tables that show costs based on factors such as region and operation type. This means that each company's total cost is going to be completely different and based upon specific requirements. So as much as I'd like to tell you exactly what your bottom line is going to be, I can't. Instead, I can give an overview of each pricing category using my company, Jen's Jams. Suppose I have the following storage usage pattern in a given month. Let's find out how much my company will pay. The first two lines here are in the data storage category. Data storage costs apply to your at rest storage of your data in cloud storage. For a quick refresher, at rest means that the data is physically on the disk itself and not somewhere else in transit through the network or only temporarily housed there. Regional or multi-regional storage is appropriate for storing data that's frequently accessed, such as serving website content, interactive workloads, or data supporting mobile and gaming applications. For Jen's Jams, we've picked multi-regional storage because we've got customers all over the world. My company's cost for multi-region storage is 2.6 cents per gigabyte. So the total cost for multi-regional storage this month is going to be $1,597.44. The majority of my company's music is held in the multi-regional storage so that each song can be as accessible as possible. The next expense is also for data storage, but this is for nearline storage. Nearline storage, as you'd remember, is a low-cost, highly durable storage service for storing infrequently accessed data. It's a better choice than multi-regional storage or regional storage in scenarios where slightly lower availability, 30-day minimum storage duration, and costs for data access are acceptable trade-offs for lower storage costs. Nearline storage is ideal for infrequently read or modified data. We're talking once a month or less. And nearline storage is also appropriate for data backup, disaster recovery, and archival storage. At Jen's Jams, we use nearline storage to back up our music collection in the event that a song gets lost. I also use nearline storage for songs that are rarely ever downloaded. Nearline storage for the US multi region location is one cent per gigabyte, so the total cost here is $1,024. Notice that this is less than the total cost of multi-regional storage, even though I'm storing more data. Next up in my pricing table is network costs. Network usage charges apply when an object or object metadata is read from your buckets, that is, egress. The cost depends on several factors and includes caveats, for example, like circumstances with the network egress within GCP. For example, data egress from your bucket to a non-cloud storage Google Cloud Platform service is free if your bucket is located in a region, the GCP service is located in a multi-region, and both locations are on the same continent. So accessing data in a US East 1 bucket with a US App Engine instance would be free. My company's egress falls under general network usage, so none of those special use cases apply. Network ingress is free. An operation is an action that makes changes to or retrieves information about buckets and objects in cloud storage. Operations are divided into three different categories, class A, class B, and free. There's a lot to each of these categories, so for details, go ahead and check the linked documentation. Costs for operations vary by operation class and storage class. In my case, Class A operations are in multi-region storage, so the cost is $0.05 cents per 10,000 operations. 
There are Class B operations in multi-regional storage data and nearline storage data, and those are priced differently. My totals are $4 and $1, respectively. Because nearline storage and cold line storage are intended for storing infrequently accessed data, there are additional costs associated with retrieval and minimum storage durations. But again, more about that in the documentation. And there you have it. My company's cloud storage usage comes out to a total of $7,460.22. There's quite a bit more to billing than what I've shown you today, and prices may change after this video is released. So please be sure to check out the documentation linked below for the most up-to-date pricing information. There's plenty more to discuss about billing, but that's a totally different episode. Don't forget to subscribe, give us a like, and tell us what you want to learn about Google Cloud Storage. Thanks for joining us on this quick bite of cloud storage. See you next time. <laughs>